Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today's video is a look at RGB memory. But hang in there, because it's got liquid in it. Well, it's not in it, it's, it's on top of it in this clear bit at the top here. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So, in April, ADATA announced their new Spectrix D80 DDR4 RGB liquid cooling memory. And as the name suggests, it packs both RGB lighting and liquid. What more could you ask for in a set of memory modules? I hate to think. Formerly known as Project Jellyfish, we don't know why they actually changed the name because, well, that is a way shorter and more catchy name in my opinion. Anyway, Spectrix D80 is it, and the new memory will be available in a wide range of options. On hand for testing, we have the 32GB DDR4-3600 kit packing four modules in total. I've got another one here, and I've got one that I pulled apart. And they are rated for uh, CL17-18-18 timings at 1.35 volts. Design-wise, they are unusual, as you might expect. The profile, though, is pretty typical for your more high-end memories. They stand 46.6 millimeters tall, so very similar to the G-Skill Sniper X memory, for example. When it comes to sort of the more technical stuff, ADATA doesn't really give away too much on their website. You'll read that they are indeed liquid-cooled using non-conductive fluid with a low boiling point to dissipate the heat effectively. No technical information on the liquid, though, is given, and I have asked ADATA, but they haven't got back to me with that information yet. Yet. They also point out the liquid is hermetically sealed and basically that's a fancy way of saying that it shouldn't leak or fart all over the place. Speaking of emitting wind, the phase change process absorbs a lot of thermal energy and here it is intended to take heat away from the PCB and memory chips. Connected to a clear tube on top of the modules is a thin aluminium heat spreader. The heat spreader is connected to the surface of the memory chips via a thin adhesive thermal pad and it then transfers heat to the liquid via two small tabs at either end. Since this is just single-sided memory, there is just one black heat spreader that connects to the liquid tube. The opposite side features a decorative red piece of aluminium, and this strip is also found on the front side. It covers the black heat spreader on the front side, and again is locked into position using some double-sided adhesive. For those of you wondering, ADATA is using Samsung's K4A8G08ICs, otherwise known as Samsung BDI memory. So if you drop them down to DDR3400, for example, you will be able to run them at the advanced timings that we've been testing second gen Ryzen processors with. When compared to the G-Skill Sniper X DDR4-3600 memory that I've been using for testing Ryzen, the Spectrix D80 offers much tighter timings out of the box. I won't give you a full rundown, but you can quite clearly see how they compare here on the screen in this little table that I've made. Before we get to testing out how well the liquid cooling works, let's take a quick look at the RGB lighting. Embedded on the opposite side of the PCB from the memory ICs are 10 RGB LED lights, and these illuminate the clear strip that runs across the top of the modules containing the liquid. The clear plastic has been given a slight tint, which helps make the effect a little more discreet. ADATA offers their RGB sync software for controlling the lighting effects, but alternatively you can use your motherboard's lighting software, provided you're using a board from ASRock, MSI, Gigabyte, or ASUS. Personally, I think the RGB lighting effects look okay, but it's certainly not the best looking RGB memory that I've seen. Of course, this is completely subjective, but there are quite a few alternatives that I do prefer. Of course, the real draw card here is the liquid cooling, so what does it really have to offer? Well, honestly, not a lot, but I'm sure that probably doesn't surprise that many of you. DDR4 memory at 1.35 volts doesn't get particularly hot, and to be honest, doesn't require any form of cooling at all. So those heat spreaders you see on pretty much all the high-end desktop memory are mostly just there for show. Unfortunately, the thermal sensor that allows monitoring via software such as hardware info has been disabled on the ADATA memory. So while I could easily monitor the G-Skill Sniper X memory via software, I couldn't do the same with the Spectrix D80 memory. So I got out the thermal gun and measured surface temperatures after an hour long IDA64 memory stress test inside the Corsair Crystal 570X test system. This means that the memory ICs are likely getting a bit hotter than what I'm reporting here, but not much hotter. With an ambient air temperature of 21 degrees, the Sniper X memory maxed out at just 32 degrees when fed 1.4 volts. Under the same conditions, the Spectrix D80 memory was an entire degree cooler, just one degree. It's actually hard to say if that's an improvement at all, that's certainly within the margin of error. 
I decided to test again, but this time with all forms of cooling removed, leaving the memory chips completely exposed. This saw the load temperature increase by just three degrees. Yep, a whole three degrees, taking the peak surface temperature to just 34 degrees. So, as expected, liquid cooling DDR4 memory is a bit pointless. Even if DDR4 memory ran twice as hot as it actually does, I'm not convinced a data solution would actually help. Certainly no more than a proper finned heatsink. In fact, I'm willing to bet it would probably be worse. So, a bit of a gimmick there to be honest, but at least the memory does come with some pretty impressive timings out of the box. Uh, the only other issue I see for this memory could be the price. I expect that you will pay a bit of a premium for the liquid in the top, but we don't really know just yet because availability is quite weak. So yeah, hopefully pricing is competitive though. The only other issue I have with the Spectrix D80 is the fact that they've wrapped RGB memory with red heat spreaders. Have you learnt nothing from MSI? <laughs> it's really got to be black or white. There's no other option for RGB memory and anything else such as this red stuff just defeats the purpose. And as silly as it sounds, I really feel like these red heat spreaders are really going to hurt sales of this memory. And that is going to do it for now. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the work we do at Harbour Unboxed, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I will see you again next time.